Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is E.T. The Extraterrestrial, brought to us by Atari. This is one of those games I really don't think needs too much of an introduction, <laughs> but here we go anyway. E.T. came out in 1982, just in time for the Christmas 1982 season. Atari, the makers of the game, and the makers of the most popular home console at the time, paid $25 million in order to have the exclusive video game rights to E.T. Once they had the rights to the game, of course, they had to make the game itself. They got the rights to the game in late July 1982. They then gave Howard Scott Warshaw the job of creating the game. He was given only five weeks to create the game. Previous to this, he had actually done one of Atari's most popular and better original titles, Yard's Revenge. During the making of that game, he actually had many months to work on a game and had really no pressure in doing so. Here, he was given only five weeks and had a ton of pressure to make sure that this game was out and released for the holiday season of 1982. It's interesting to note that Steven Spielberg himself actually requested that Warshaw be the one to create the game for E.T. This was not only due to Yard's Revenge, but Warshaw had also created another popular and well-made game for the Atari 2600 based on the license for Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Warshaw came up with a game design that was a little bit unique for its time, but due to the very short development time that he did have, this unfortunately ended up costing the game, and it ended up being considered one of the worst video games ever made. So here we go with E.T. the Extraterrestrial for the Atari 2600. When you start the game, you actually get a nice Atari 2600 rendition of the E.T. theme, even though it's only a few seconds, this is actually one of the bright spots of the game. Even though E.T. himself really doesn't look that great for the title screen of the game. Like many other 2600 games, there's multiple different difficulties and gameplays to choose from. There's actually three in the game, with the second and third ones being easier, including the third one not having any of the other perils having to deal with, mainly the Doctor and the FBI agent. However, I'm going to be playing on the number one difficulty. I'm going to go through the game twice and try to do my best to explain what's going on. In E.T., the world is kind of set up like a cube. There are four screens going around that all have pits in them. The top features a forest level that you start off in, and then the bottom features the prison area of the game. You can see there's all these different holes set up all throughout the game. If one pixel of E.T. touches any of the holes, you immediately fall down into one of the pits. You then have to press the button to raise E.T.'s head, and then you're able to float out of the pit. Falling down these random pits, you'll find a few different things. You'll either find a dead flower that we'll get to later, or one of the pieces to E.T.'s phone. Most of the time, though, you'll find nothing at all. The setups and where the pieces of the phone are are completely random every time you play the game. That's really kind of the main purpose of the game is to collect all the pieces of the phone, summon the spaceship, and then make sure that you're at the landing spot for the spaceship once it arrives. There's many other elements to the game that are quite confusing, but once explained, at least tell you what's going on. You'll notice at the very top of the screen, there's all kinds of different icons that appear. Every time I'm walking around, new icons appear up. Whether they're a Roman numeral 3, whether or not they're arrows, a question mark, or multiple different other things. To kind of summarize it though, if you're on one of the whole screens and a question mark appears, if you raise E.T.'s head, one of the pits will end up flashing. A pit that flashes has a piece of the phone in it. If you've already collected that piece of phone on that particular screen of holes, of course nothing will happen. If you're unable to find the question mark in order to find out what exact hole has one of the pieces of the phone, then unfortunately you kind of just got to keep falling in the pits until eventually you find it. Like I said though, there's four screens, and only three of the screens are going to have pits that actually have phones per game. You also collect Reese's Pieces in the game. Remember how Elliot was able to lure E.T. away using the Reese's Pieces since he loved them? Well, they got incorporated into the game. Those are the little individual specs that you see, and when you pick them up, you end up getting one to your inventory. Well, you just noticed in this pit here that once I fell down it and talked to the flower, after doing a very specific set of things, the flower comes to life, I gain an extra life, and you saw actually a Yar from Yar's Revenge fly away. 
I'll be doing this again on the second gameplay in order to get another easter egg, and you can actually do this three times for three different easter eggs. The setup though is, you must get seven Reese's Pieces, exactly seven, not any less or more, then summon Elliot. To summon Elliot, you'll notice at the top of the screen there's a smiley face that's kind of yelling. When you see this, then you can summon Elliot. Sometimes he'll appear right away, sometimes it'll take a few minutes, but eventually he will show up and take the Reese's Pieces you currently have away from you, giving you a bonus point later on in the game. You'll notice here that I'm waiting for the spaceship itself. Like I said, I'm playing the game twice, so I'll explain it more so as I'm going through. Once the timer reaches zero, I must be at the landing spot. The landing spot is a special spot that is a square with an X in it. This is only available on this screen here, the forest scene. Once you got the spaceship to appear and you picked you up, you complete the game. After it racks up your score, you can hit the button and start the game all over again. Okay, there's a lot more to this game though. The arrows, when they're at the top of the screen, they will automatically teleport you to the screen that they're pointing to. You'll also notice a circle with a dot in it at the top of the screen. Doing E.T.'s head-raising motion at this point will allow you to eat one of the Reese's Pieces, giving you a very small bit of your health back. One of the other things you'll notice is the Roman numeral 3. When you see this and you're standing on that spot, and one of the doctors or FBI agents come after you, you can then raise your head and he'll immediately go off screen back to the starting area for them, which is the jail screen. The doctor in the game, as you've noticed, will pick you up and take you right back to the prison area, in which case he just disappears and you're easily able to escape the prison. No penalty is really given to you then other than really kind of wasting your time and a little bit of your score. If you run out of score though, I have to say, that's the only way you can game over in the game. Once your point count reaches zero at the very bottom of the screen, as you see it goes down, every time I walk around or do anything in the game, it reaches zero, you lose a life. Now you will gain some health back after losing a life. Once you've lost all your lives, it is complete game over, you have to reset. The worst thing about this game is the FBI agent. He ends up appearing, touches you, and steals one of your phone pieces. Now he doesn't keep it on him, no, he immediately throws it in one of the pits. You don't know which pit it is, it changes up every time, but he throws it into his pits. Here you'll notice though that once again I use the Reese's Pieces in order to summon Elliot, he took the seven, I go to the pit with the flower in it, and now when I bring the flower to life I get an extra life, and the sprite of Indiana Jones from Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark Pier. Now if you play the game a third time, you actually get an HSW set of initials, Howard Scott Warshaw, a way for him to get a little bit of credit in the game since Programmers at Atari weren't allowed to get credit in individual games, so they always kind of start sneaking their initials into the game. Here though, I've gotten all three pieces of the ship again, and I'm summoning the mothership. The cool thing about summoning the mothership though, there you can kind of just wait. The whole timer will go down, and then another one will go down quickly. Now the thing with the timer is, once it reaches zero, like I said, you must be at the spot, the landing spot. If you're not the landing spot, or even worse, an enemy, the doctor or or the FBI agent, is on screen with you at the same time that the spaceship counts down, the spaceship will not come. Even if you're standing at the right spot, it will not show up. So what I like to do is start summoning the ship, wait for the countdown to get low, stand in one of the pit areas that has the Roman numeral, wait for them to appear, then get rid of them, and then go up to the spot. Sometimes the guys you summon will sometimes get stuck on screen like you saw with the FBI agent trying to go down, and he'll just stay there for a while, giving you free reign of the map for a little bit of time. But with that, that is E.T. for the Atari 2600. It really honestly isn't the worst game ever, but it takes a lot of explaining to even figure out for once what the heck you're trying to do. And for someone back in 1983 with no internet and no other ways of trying to figure out how to play a game, especially a kid getting this on Christmas morning, I can see why it's considered one of the worst games. Because of the reputation it ended up getting, it initially sold very well, but of course those copies of the game start flooding back to all the stores. Due to this, companies that ended up holding the game in stock lost interest in video games, causing them to stop selling them in the stores or starting to sell video games at extremely low prices. 
ET and Pac-Man for the Atari 2600 ended up costing the company so much money it would be sold in just a little over a year after this game was released. Atari would end up never recovering and it ended up being bought out multiple different times and closing all together years later, as well as the video game market shifted from North America over to Japan. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.